Welcome to the What is Stoicism podcast. The Greek Stoic philosopher Cleanthes was originally a boxer who took up philosophy when he came to Athens and eventually became the successor to Zeno of Sidium as the second head of the Stoic school around 262 BC. He supported his studies by working as a water carrier at night and the short anecdotes we have about his life provide good lessons on humility and simple living. The biographical stories I want to share about Cleanthes today come courtesy of Diogenes Laertius and his famous work, Lives of the Eminent Philosophers. Here's what he says about Cleanthes. Cleanthes, son of Phanius, was a native of Assos. At first he was a boxer, as Antisthenes says in his successions. He arrived in Athens with only four drachmas, as some say, and after meeting Zeno, he pursued philosophy very creditably and remained faithful to the same doctrines. He was renowned for his diligence, and as he was extremely poor, he was forced to work for wages. Thus by night he used to draw water in gardens, and by day he exercised himself in arguments. Hence he was nicknamed Freantles, or the water boy. They say that he was brought into court to give an account of how, being in such fine condition, he made a living. He was acquitted when he presented as his witnesses the gardener in whose garden he drew water, and the barley seller for whom he cooked the grain. The Areopagites were satisfied and voted him a donation of ten minas, though Zeno would not let him accept it. We are also told that Antigonus gave him 3,000 drachmas. One day, as he was leading some young men to a festival, a gust of wind exposed his flank, and he was seen to be wearing no tunic under his cloak. For this he was applauded by the Athenians, as Demetrius of Magnesia says in his Men of the Same Name. He was then admired also for this. They say that Antigonus, while attending one of his lectures, asked why he drew water. To this, Cleanthes replied, Do I only draw water? What, do I not dig? Do I not water the garden and take every sort of job for the sake of philosophy? For Zeno trained him in this way and exacted an obol from his wages. One day Zeno brought his followers a handful of coins and said, Cleanthes could also support a second Cleanthes if he liked, whereas those who have the means to support themselves look to others for their necessities, even though they have plenty of time for philosophy. Hence Cleanthes was also called a second Heracles. He was hard-working, but not naturally gifted and unusually slow, which is why Timon speaks of him as follows. Who is this, who like a ram ranges over the ranks of warriors, a masticator of words, the stone of Assos, a sluggish slab. He bore the jeers of his fellow students and put up with being called an ass, saying that he alone was able to carry Zeno's load. One day, when reproached with timidity, he said, that is why I seldom make mistakes. Preferring his own life to that of the wealthy, he said that while they were playing ball, he was at work digging hard and barren ground. He would often scold himself, and when Ariston heard him doing this and asked, Who are you scolding? He laughed and said, An old man with grey hair, but no wisdom. When someone said that the philosopher Arcesilaus did not act as he should, Cleanthes said, Stop, don't blame him. For if in word he rejects duty, at least he acknowledges it indeed. And when Arcesilaus said, I don't care for flatterers, Cleanthes replied, True. I flatter you by saying that you act otherwise than your words would indicate. Cleanthes died under the following circumstances. When his gums became swollen, he followed the advice of his doctors and abstained from food for two days. His condition improved so much that the doctors permitted him to resume his usual diet, but he declined to do so. Declaring that he had already gone too far down the road, he continued to fast for his remaining time and died, according to some at the same age as Zeno, he had studied with Zeno for 19 years.